Hello everyone and welcome back to the course on the NVIDIA Jetson. In this lecture, we will set up our Jetson for the very first time. So let's get started. So in today's lecture, we will start with a comparison of the Jetson with the Raspberry Pi and we will compare how the Jetson is better. We will also compare the different variants of the Jetson and also their major differences. Thereafter, we will move on to the SD card flashing part in which we will see how we can mount the OS image of the Jetson onto the SD card. After we have successfully flashed the card, we will then start our Jetson for the very first time. So here we have our Jetson as well as the Raspberry Pi. Most of you may already have seen and used the Raspberry Pi. The major difference between the Jetson and the Raspberry Pi is that the Raspberry Pi does not contain a GPU. In comparison, the Jetson has a GPU which makes it already better than the Raspberry Pi when we want to run AI applications. So the first release of the Raspberry Pi was in 2012, which has progressed to the Raspberry Pi 4, which is the latest one, and that was released in June 2019. The Jetson, on the other hand, was also released in the same year, but just a few months before the Raspberry Pi. Both of them have almost the same kind of processor in terms of performance. However, the processor of the Raspberry Pi, which contains an ARM A72, consumes 15% less energy when compared to the processor of the Jetson that has an A57. The Jetson Nano comes with 2 and 4 GB of memory, whereas the Raspberry Pi comes in flavors of 1, 2, 4 and 8 GB of RAM. Both of them contain the same type of RAM that use low power DDR4 with the same transfer rate. As we have already discussed that the Raspberry Pi does not possess a graphics card or GPU, which means that it has no support for the CUDA. On the other hand, the Jetson comes with the CUDA support for the GPU, which makes AI development easier and faster. Both of them contain four USB ports that can use USB Type-B to connect four peripherals simultaneously. Also, both devices contain Ethernet ports for internet access. However, Jetson does not have any Wi-Fi modules, whereas the Raspberry Pi has a built-in wireless card. In this case, we can either use a Wi-Fi dongle or the option of connecting an external Wi-Fi module under the heatsink. Both devices have the HDMI port for display to an external monitor. However, the Jetson has an additional display port, which can also be used for hooking up an additional display. The 40-pin header for the general purpose input-output is available in both the modules to connect any external device. The Jetson has two power options available. One is via a micro USB port like the Raspberry Pi, as well as an additional barrel jack for the high power input. While running machine learning models, the Jetson may require more power that a micro USB port cannot provide. So in that case, we would have to connect the barrel jack to provide the required power to the Jetson. The price of the Jetson Nano is available for between $60 to $100, depending on which model you want to buy, whether it is the 2GB or the 4GB variant. Whereas Raspberry Pi can be found for between $40 to $110 US dollars. Altogether, although Raspberry Pi seems like a good device as well, when it comes to running machine learning models, the Pi fades because it lacks a GPU for acceleration. You would require an accelerator module like a neural compute stick or an OpenCV AI kit if you want to run heavier AI models in real time. So that leaves us with the winner, which is the Jetson. Let's continue to compare different variants of the Jetson and see how they are better in terms of performance in the next lecture. Cool, so if you're ready to get started, what you need to do is scroll down and you see that link over there? Yeah, yep, yep, that one. Click over there. It'll take you to a page where you can sign up to get a free preview of the course, type in your name and email, and you can start learning for free. Otherwise, if you're ready for the comprehensive course, we are running a special pre-launch campaign where you'll be able to pre-order Jetson Pro now at early bird prices. You'll also find the hardware requirements there on the enrollment page. There are several variants of the Jetson that are available in the market. The most popular devices are the Jetson Nano, the Jetson TX2, the Jetson Xavier NX, and the Jetson AG Xavier. The AG Xavier is the latest version of the Jetson with the most powerful features. The Jetson Nano has a 4-core ARM processor, whereas the TX2 and the Xavier NX have a 6-core ARM processor that are much faster than the Nano's processor. The TX2 also contains two L2 caches of 2 MB size, whereas the Xavier NX has three L2 caches of the same size, with an additional L3 cache of 4 MB size. This makes it even faster than the TX and TX2 in terms of processing. The AG Xavier has the most powerful CPU, 
with 8 cores and 4 L2 caches and 1 L3 cache of the same size as the Xavier NX. The Jetson Nano comes with 2 and 4 GB memory and a 64-bit data line with a maximum speed of 25.6 GB per second. The TX2 comes with options of 4 and 8 GB RAM with 128-bit data lines, along with double the data transfer rate as compared to the Jetson Nano. The Xavier NX and AG Xavier have the advanced version of RAM that is low-power DDR4X, which is actually more energy efficient than the low-power DDR4, which is present in the TX2 and the Nano. The AG Xavier is available in 16 and 32 GB RAM with 256 bit data lines that can transfer a data of up to 137 gigabytes per second. As we know, the speciality of Jetson is having a GPU, which makes it better than the other modules like the Raspberry Pi, etc. The Nano is embedded with the 128 core NVIDIA Maxwell GPU that has the capability of processing 0.5 tera floating points per second, or teraflops. The TX2 comes with a better GPU, which has double the amount of cores compared to the Nano, and has the ability to process 1.3 teraflops. The Xavier NX contains a GPU with slightly different technology that can process 21 tera operations per second, or TOPS. Basically, one T-flop is equal to four TOPS. So actually, the Xavier NX has the ability to process 5.25 tera floating point numbers at an instant which is more than double that of the TX2 performance. The AG Xavier, as usual, has the best GPU amongst all of the Jetson devices, containing 512 cores with a processing power of 32 tops. All of the Jetson modules have some built-in backup memory that varies from 8 GB to 32 GB. We can also extend this memory using an external SD card for any size. Each Jetson module contains CSI ports to connect multiple cameras at the same time, and have different video processing speeds based on the performance of their CPU and GPU. The Jetson Nano can have a power of 5 to 20 watts, whereas the other Jetson modules can get up to 30 watts of power using the barrel jack. On the basis of performance and architecture, the Jetsons are available with different prices that range from $60 to $1,000. So that was a detailed comparison of the most popular devices in the Jetson range. Let's now move on to the SD card flashing part. In order to operate your Jetson, you will need to download the image of the operating system, or OS, that has been provided by NVIDIA. Simply click on the given link here, and you will be directed to the webpage from where you can download the Jetson Nano image. After that, we need an application named Belena Etcher that will help us to flash this image to the SD card, and you can download it from the given link right over here. Over here is a quick animation of how the process of SD card flashing will be performed. A minimum of a 16 GB SD card is required to flash the images, as the size of the OS is around 9 GB. But according to my recommendation, it is better to use at least a 32 GB SD card, so that you can save your project data and files in the future. Here we have another animation. You can see how it is performed. So, from the previous slide, you can see here we can select the image, which is the image that we have downloaded, and then we can select the drive. This is the SD card which you have already connected to your computer and you have to select it here on which you want to do the flashing and then you can click the flash button. When you click on the flash button, then the flashing starts. So it looks something like this. The flashing starts and then you start validating and then the process completes. After successful flashing, insert the SD card just like this. As we have previously discussed, the SD card port is below the heatsink. You have to insert the SD card just like this into the Jetson and start the Jetson using either of the power sources, either the micro USB source or the barrel jack. Here are some important links where you can download all of the required hardware to operate the Jetson so that you can run your machine learning models on it. From here you can purchase the Jetson Nano. The one we are using is the Jetson Nano B01, which you can buy from this link depending on the availability. You may experience unavailability due to the global chip shortages. Otherwise, you can check your local markets. Next up, we have the SD card. I recommend that you buy the high-speed Class 10 SD card. Otherwise, you may experience low performance on your Jetson. From here, you can find an adequate power supply, which can provide up to 20 watts of power to the Jetson. In order to take care of your Jetson, we have also provided another link here where you can buy the Jetson case along with a cooling fan. 
When you are running the machine learning models on the Jetson, it gets hot, so you need a fan to cool down the heatsink that is attached to the Jetson processor. I've also provided a link to the Wi-Fi module, so you can buy it from here and connect your Jetson to it so that you can connect to the Wi-Fi. So that's it. Now let's move on to our Jetson and start tinkering with it. So our Jetson is ready. Once we have flashed the SD card and inserted it into the Jetson, you can start the device and log in. You can see that there are already a few things available here. We can see here we have a browser for surfing the web, and there are a few things already available. You can just ignore it, but these things are just to connect with the community. Like if you have some queries or something, there's a Jetson forum, and here we have a Jetson community forum where you can post your questions or queries. That was all for today's lecture. We have successfully completed the flashing part and we have also started our Jetson for the first time and everything is ready. So we will meet in the next lecture where we will continue the next part. Thank you. Cool, so if you're ready to get started, what you need to do is scroll down and you see that link over there? Yeah, yep, yep that one, click over there. It will take you to a page where you can sign up to get a free preview of the course, type in your name and email, and you can start learning for free. Otherwise, if you're ready for the comprehensive course, we are running a special pre-launch campaign where you'll be able to pre-order Jetson Pro now at early bird prices. You'll also find the hardware requirements there on the enrollment page. Don't waste time, don't let your competition learn this before you do. Enroll now if you're ready to learn the Jetson Pro course. Links are all down below and we'll see you inside the course.